So early today, um, um, I can only lay, you know, for a few minutes on, on my right side, um, where it's less pain. It doesn't take the pain away, but it's less. And I'm closing my eyes, and I'm trying to, um, you know, focus on, okay, let's get this pain down. I'm trying to just get a little rest. I know I'm not going to get sleep, but at least let my eyes rest. When I'm resting my eyes, I'm, I'm thanking God that I have this place here to heal up. You know, because um, I don't know how long I'm, I'm going to be. It also, um, you know, trying to take a bath and shower last uh, a few days to help with this has um, it's painful because I already have fibromyalgia and all this is inflaming it. So, um, so I'm laying here earlier today and I'm trying to like just visualize my pain just going down a little bit, just enough for me to rest my eyes. I get a call from Cecil. This is the first words to come out of her mouth. Did you sell your RV? Yeah. Uh, I'm just waiting on the check because I cannot drive my RV no more. I can't stress out the cops chasing me and threatening to told my RV. Especially when I'm just getting over the injury from trying to recover everything out of my RV so when they tow it, I'm just going to lose my home. Well, she tells me, don't sell your RV because you're going to need to move back into it. that I'm just going to be here until the 15th. That first phone call was very short. I, I, I had to compose myself. I was, I was ready to lose it. I made a couple calls. Um, one to a friend that helped me compose myself again. And so I called her back again and I told her about, I took the assessment test when we were out in Marina, I, I got a high score, and I'm also on a victim em emergency. I have somebody that made me their target um, because I ruined their life because they committed a crime against me back in 2017. Um, so all they could do is send me numbers to call. And I tried calling um, through what I learned through um, Central Coast Alliance that they're partnering up with, um, with the uh, 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 Homeless Solution. And um, I call them and, and they only do um, Chinatown and Salinas, which I'm glad that they're helping them out. I really am. Um, because we all need the help. It's not, the homeless is not just in the area that I'm in. It's all over the world, actually. So, you know, I'm happy in that part. But now, what am I going to do? Um, I got PTSD from back um, 2017 is what triggered it off this time, majorly, brought it up high. I've always had PTSD because of my family, violent, abusive. They, they offer me like public housing, you know, I have to share housing with other people. I don't want to give up my cat. I don't want to give up my bird. Uh, I can't stand visitors for more than 30 minutes. I don't want to be around people. I don't trust nobody. Um, I've, over, I've just uh, applied for the IHSS so I could have a, a caregiver. Um, because I, I can't hardly do anything. I yelled, uh, not yelled at her, but I got firm with her. I said, why is the county doing this to all of us? 
I was trying to get myself put back together, taking care of my health. I finally feel like I could do that, especially with the recent injury I got. And now I'm being told that I gotta be out by the 15th. Now my fibromyalgia is really a full blown. I'm trying to keep myself together because if I break down, I don't know if I'm gonna come back from that. Because really I'm getting mad. I feel jilted or jolted, whatever. I can't even think straight. This is what they're doing to all of us. It's not just me. My friend Bella, she'll be out on the street on the 3rd of January because she can't move back in her trailer because it's about to come apart and it's moldy because it's torn at a certain um, partition in her um, rig that has been getting wet. Ugh. Another friend, Steve, is about to lose his van and, and Tank, which he's an old dog, and he's about to lose his support animal. <sighs> I could only lay on this side, and that's only for like six, eight, ten minutes. I, I got pills here in different positions because I tried to lay in different positions. I try to put three pills under my stomach, two pills under my back, one pillow under each side. Can't do it. I even went as far as just laying the top half of me on a bed. Because now I'm walking over, bent over, like I'm a hunchback of a Notre Dame. And when I'm getting upset, it agitates it, like you would not believe. And like I said, I'm not the only one suffering like this. They put us in a motel, and like Bella, she, she has fibromyalgia, she just got diagnosed with that the other day. Um, Ever since I've known her, she's always has to walk hunched over because she's always in pain. And uh, and, uh, and we get into these rooms temporarily, and we think that we have some time to heal. You know, to take care of our health, make our appointments. But no. I told the uh, young lady from Cecil, she was pres persistent that I go back out in my RV. And I was like, I can't keep up with my RV no more. I can't have my nebulizer in my RV no more. Um, yeah, Dorian um, lent me a, a, a um, pattery pack, but and, and he got another one, and he'll say, you know, um, when this one runs out of charge, call me for another charge, but you know how hard it is to get a hold of these folks? I can't have my portable generator. i got to sell that, too. I was keeping up on it in Marina. I was having people help me keep up on it when I couldn't. There was days I had bad days, and they would do the oil change for me and, you know, put the gas in. So they break up a community we had where we were helping each other. They already managed to take one life. And now they want to put us out here and take how many more lives? How many? If I don't die from my health problem and my injuries, I'm going to die because I'm a target to this one particular person. And you know, I deserve to live my life. And so do these other people. They deserve to live their life. Not to be put out on the street and die like alongside of dogs. Even dogs don't deserve to be dying out there in the streets alone.
I'm saying to the county, the supervisors, you need to step up. I became your responsibility. We all became your responsibility when you had us do all those paperwork, all those tests, jumping through all the hoops, giving us just certain time to get everything in, 10 days, right, hoping that we weren't able to get our information together because, you know, homeless people don't got their shit together. Surprise, most of us do. I did. And I made the 10 day. Now, as I told the young lady, selling my RV, it's because I owe people, I can't handle the RV, and also I owe people. So two great opportunity. I can't drive the RV no more. I can't deal with the expense of gasoline when, to put in the RV when they're chasing us all over town because we can't park anywhere. I can't handle going without le electricity to run my nebulizer or even heat during the winter. So I was grateful to be in, in, in my hotel room. And number two, I'm selling my RVs because I owe money to people to help me. And they're not much more better than I am financially. So at the end of it all, I'm going to end up having to sell my RV because I already got a buyer and I cannot drive it no more. And I am going to pay the people back because I did tell them I was going to pay them back. And maybe end up, end up out here in the streets broke. I have to lose my cat and I have to lose my bird. The county, we became your responsibility. Uh, did you just do this to make yourself look good throughout the holidays so that, you know, the taxpayers could, could be, uh, be at ease and, and, and be able to enjoy their holidays and everything and not have to worry about us homeless out here because the county got our back. I mean, it was this all a show? So that the, the community doesn't question you about how you truly work us in this system? Oh yes, we're taking care of them. We got them covered. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. We don't even need to ask what taxpayer money is going to and any donation that might be coming through from other um, source or whatever, right? Make yourself look good, right? But now I'm being told that I'll, I have to move into my RV on the 15th. Full person care. So state funding, and that's why. And 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 they were they're running out of they ran out of funding. Um, I am put on the project room key. I am on a list. Um, they call me on December 21st. And I called them today to make sure that I'm still on a list, but they don't know when that's going to start. Um, but they call me to, uh, uh, for me to answer basic questions. What am I going to need? And um, we have it set up that I have a, uh, a handicap room. I also apply for IHSS to, to get a caregiver. I'm about done. And I want to get my health back. I may not get it back 100%, but I want to be able to eat when I'm hungry. When you're in pain, you can't eat. I got two meals sitting over there, my breakfast and my lunch, and I haven't been there to eat. How you like to try to eat when you have to move so many different positions just to find a place that doesn't feel hurting here, hurting here, and hurting here? Hmm? Hmm? So, county, 
You proud of yourself? Is this going to make you have a smile on your sleep tonight? You know? You hate us this much? Really? You broke up our community? One person ended up taking their life? Cyril are just going to be out in the street dying? Lots of people lost their rigs. Tickets on those, so those are about to get gone. Some people have never even been homeless yet, about to be homeless. Oh, yeah, hey, welcome. To those of you that are about to be homeless, yeah, be prepared to be like a yo-yo, okay? Oh, if they ever say they got your back, the only way they got your back is when they have a knife in your back. I have tried to call uh, the a homeless coalition, left messages. I tried to call the county, uh, left messages. <sighs> um, the only one that even um, answered and, and gave me a little bit more clear information um, was the one for the uh, uh, project room key, which is Monterey County. Um, but I have her direct number, so I was able to get a hold of her. What kind of response are you hoping for, expecting? I'm hoping that the project room key will come available to us, including myself, before we have to be out of here on the 15th. And then after that, I'm hoping that I get the Section 8 voucher, which I've been also trying to contact them on it, and I haven't heard nothing about it. Nothing. But I qualify for it. Um, and then, even when I get the Section 8 housing, there's going to be landlords that don't want to take it, don't want to accept it. And like Bella, she's had hers for like three months, been trying to find a place, and she can't find a place, they'll accept them. So, we do everything that they ask us to. Everything. And for what? For what? Yeah, I tried taking pain pills. Uh, it makes me throw up. Um, so last night I tried to take half of it, didn't do nothing. I'm on 50 milligram of uh, um, Drenadol, I think it's called Drenadol. I could try to reach for it. Not that big a deal. Anyway. If I take the full pill, which is 50 milligram, I throw up. Uh, you know how it is to get up in the middle of the night and, and be throwing up? First, it, dry, it starts with a dry heaves. If you haven't eaten anything, you just have dry heaves. If you're eating something, it'll eventually come up. During that time, I'm trying to throw up, get it out, because it's just feeling like it's just going to burst out. That hurts my injury more. So now, I'm back to being in pain. That could be at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I've been going to the chiropractor almost every day. Yesterday I went to a chiropractor because I've been having this ongoing injury with my membrane um, to my ribs. Um, <laughs> And um, the first time I, I tore it is because uh, I, my RV was being threatened to be told I had to move all the important stuff out of there by myself, unload the RV and load it up to the storage. That took a toll on me. That was like uh, 
two trips kind of job. And um, second time is because, uh, again, my RV was being threatened to be towed, and I was here at, at the uh, where I'm staying right now at this motel. And um, didn't have no way uh, over there except for one neighbor who happened to only have a motorcycle. Um, and I was still healing up from the first terror in my membrane. Um, so riding on a motorcycle was not a good idea. Um, it, it tore it again. Um, in the process of me trying to heal with my membrane the last uh, couple weeks, I uh, did something to my other side. I don't know if I bruised it, uh, you know, a muscle or a tissue, I don't know what's happening. Um, haven't had no sleep in um, three weeks, solid sleep. Um, yesterday uh, was real bad. I uh, went to a uh, chiropractor. Um, also, uh, um, he did some um, adjustments and untightened the area where it's inflamed. Uh, around the injuries I have. Um, I wasn't feeling um, that good right after, but I did start feeling better later on. And then last night I started feeling real bad. Didn't sleep at all last night. I was told to get a, 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 a wide uh, ace bandage to wrap around. Because, you know, no matter what position I try to get into, I mean... Your body just has to heal. I thought of position to make my back feel good that I didn't know I could still try to get into. And I mean try because mm. it wasn't successful. The pain is so bad that right this second it's just going into my stomach. I feel like this part of me all the way up into this area right here is getting run over and over and over. A few days ago I felt like the back over here was getting stabbed over and over and over. And my whole back, I could just feel my nerves just up in, up in arms. Try taking a shower when your fibromyalgia is at worst in the back. You feel like pr prickly, even to the legs, like prickly. I call it like chemical burn, but it's like prickly, like, like little stabbing, like, you know, hot stabbing little things. And all I'm trying to do is heal up. Uh, can't drive my RV, so I gotta let that go. Um, in the process of, uh, of, uh, of buying a friend's Jeep so I could drive myself when I'm able to, to appointment, because I tried to go through this uh, call car program, and they made me miss appointments, because uh, they were told the wrong address. And by the way, I, I had the uh, whole care nurse on the phone with them a couple times when I made appointments with the call a car to get me to my doctor's appointment and gave them direction. She even gave them direction, gave them the address, and they still managed not to show up in time where I missed my doctor's appointment. So this is what's happening to us. This is, you know, they, they put us into place for a little bit and then the funds are pulled out. Um, because, you know, the city, the county, they, they need to spend that money on the sweeps, you know. They need money to, they had a great Christmas, I bet, because they're supposed to get uh, 4.8 million. Yeah, so I can imagine all the Christmas kids their family got. Yeah. I'm the person that cooperates with the system, with the program. I do what they ask. Uh, I, uh... I'm part of a lot of programs. I, I follow their, their rules. I follow the agreement. And I still get bullshit. I still get this. We need to do something about this. We need to stop it because those of you that are about to become homeless, this is what you got to face. And this is what I've been trying to fight. This is what we've been trying to fight. We've been trying to avoid this. You know, if they follow through with us, 
they would have to be committed to follow through for the future ones that are coming out here. But if they're not following through with us, and then there's more people becoming homeless, do the math. You know? Maybe try to imagine what it would be like. You know? They're taking our mobile homes away. They're taking cars and tents away. Right? And the only choice we're going to have is to be on the streets. And then they're kicking us off the streets. I have provided myself with a life where I could afford to have a cat and a bird as my support system. I did that. That's why I bought a 31-foot Winnebago. Yale is a 1988. Because I wanted to keep my cat and my bird. You know, everything else was taken away from me in 2017. That's when I bought the RV. I was going to be on the streets. This is after the crime was committed against me. If I didn't have my cat and my bird, I don't know how I would have, what direction I would have gone then. I don't. But because I had the responsibility of a cat and a bird, I stayed on top of living my life, having a reason to get up every morning, and that is, you know, to take care of my babies. When you're homeless out there, totally by yourself, you don't even have a pet, you almost don't have a reason to get up every day. So people that think that us homeless shouldn't have pets, You're wrong. Because to some of us, that gives us hope to get up every day, do what we have to do to take care of them and ourselves. And they're a great support to us. When we're sad, they're there. Dog licking your face, putting his paw on your lap, letting you know he's there for you. You know, cat coming up and laying on your lap and purring rubbing up against you, when everybody else is hating on you. Do I want to lose that? No. Because every day I've been fighting to not have to give up my support system here. I was fighting not to give up my community back in Marina. And they took that apart. All I was trying to do is just live my life and, and, and share my life with my cat and my bird. And for about a minute there, you know, I have a life in a community where we were there for each other. We fed those that didn't have food. We were the shoulder for them to cry on, the ears to listen, you know, the wisdom to share with them. A couple of us got a couple of people off of uh, drugs. Yeah. Hello. See, I'm 36 years sobriety. So yeah, I was there talking to them about it. And a lot of those people do not belong being a drug addict or even homeless. And I had to let them know every day. Every day I would see them. Hey, you want a cup of coffee? You want a cigarette? Because I would roll up a cigarette. You know? And then talk to them about their situation. You know? Oh, wow, you know, you were an electrician? What do you mean were? You still can be. Have you ever had an ex of yours kind of like screw you up or even screw your um, credit? Yeah, I, I bet there's some of you to have, right? Right? Uh-huh. You trusted that one person you thought was your soulmate? Yeah. Well, that was just one person's story. A lot of us don't deserve to be out here. We shouldn't be out here. I shouldn't be out here. And I don't want to give up my cat and my bird. Sixteen years ago, I told that bird that I was going to be the last owner because they had um, three owners, and the last owner was very abusive to the bird. 
And yeah, you may not think uh, it's a big deal to, to break a, a, your word to an animal. Well, you know, that's fine. You have that right. I also have the right to feel that it isn't right to break my word to an animal. I don't care if they understand me or not. Because you see, God was there listening to my promise. You get it, Dad? Do you get it? Yeah. You don't think God is watching everything we do? Everything we say? See, that's the way I live my life every day. Like I'm under the watch of God. Well, great, my neck is crackling. It was a bad idea to sit for long. Mm. Sometimes I try to play on my tablet, and, you know, try to play solitary, you get involved in that, and then when I try to move to go to the bathroom, oh God, you know, it's like just a bunch of needles and, and burn on my nerves just going off, just going off. So you think I could drive an RV for 12 hours out there in the street being chased by a cop by the 15th? No. I know I can't. I've been trying to heal myself so that I could get better. I wanted to get back into my hobbies. Well, now that's a far distant thing to do, right? Because I ain't going to be able to do it anytime soon. What am I going to do? Do my hobby on the street? They're going to be kicking me out of there every five freaking... 10 minutes. So I can stand for now. Here's my final thought on all this. The county needs to keep to their word, do what they're supposed to do. I, I feel that we did get more than um, 4.8 million, uh, however, they don't matter. They're definitely not putting it all to us. Um, county, you need to keep your word to us because there's going to be more homeless people following us. And um, it's going to be a greater number. And uh, if you think you could stop a greater number, you're wrong. And I'll tell you what. I'll be in the front line. I don't care if I have to be in a wheelchair, to walk, or whatever. I'm going to be in the front line. Because I'm going to fight. Not just for us out here right now, but for those that are coming out. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, you supervisors, as long as it's not you or somebody you're re related to, it, it, you know, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, keep playing it this way and it might be you one day. That's all I gotta say. What's wrong, little one? My mother. Where's my mother? Lucky, I love you. Yes, Mama loves you. Bella, Bella, Mama loves you. Mama loves you, Bella. Oh, now you see why I cannot give up my pets. They've been a great support. I'm still hurting. Can't hardly move. It took me forever to get up and get my bird, Bella, out of the cage so I could spend some time with him. And then I got Cat here. Right, baby? 
Sometimes they take a nap in the same bed with me. And they're gonna put me back out on the street, even as injured as I am. Did an interview a couple days ago. Yeah, sure. Kept moving around because I can't find a place to, a, a spot to, or a position, um, to be comfortable. Things go wrong. I can't lose my babies. I cannot. I want you to promise me. me. County needs to what? live up to their promises to us. I know something he doesn't. I've been on the phone all day Thursday out. when they you gave me the news. Did I have to move back out in my RV? I can't drive the RV no more. It's not. If it's so important. It's not livable for me. Why does somebody always have to die in this scenario? I can't keep up with the maintenance on it. Because you know, I only get three hundred and forty dollars a month from GA. I've been paying a little bit to people that lend me money. I've already sold my RV to somebody else. And the money I'm getting from that, I'm paying the rest that I owe. I don't know how, I don't know how they could do this to me or to any of us. I'm not the only one with bad injury and bad health. Dude, how long have you been standing there? Oh. An hour? Sorry. Are you serious? Uh, Couldn't find my remote control, so I just found it, but I forgot to mute it. <laughs> oh, that's all there is to do when I'm on my back. Look, there are some of you about to become homeless. I'm sorry that this is what you have to look forward to. We've been trying to fight not only for ourselves that are presently homeless, but those that are about to become homeless. We've been fighting, going to meetings. I was part of the marina parking lot. And they broke up that community. As far as I know, as of right now, we lost one member of our community. She will always be a member of our community. I personally think that they put us up in these motels temporarily. Uh, for many reasons, one is to make themselves look good, that they did that during the holidays. Number two is to break us up, split us up, and then they put us out here again. I'm supposed to be on the project room key. I called Thursday and yesterday to make sure that I am on a list, and they said I am. December, December 21st, they called me, Monterey County, um, asked some questions uh, to prepare me for the uh, project room key. Um, they know that I need a handicap room uh, with a chair and a shower, um, bars in a shower, bars by the toilet, 
downstairs. I have a uh, <coughs> I have signed up for the IHSS for caregiver. Um, and then to tell me not to sell my RV, which too late. Um, that I need to move back out into my RV. Can you believe this? They want to take my RV away. I've been fighting for them not to tow my RV. That's how I got injured. It's coming to the rescue of my RV. I get injured twice over them threatening to tow my RV. And then they call me and tell me, don't sell your RV because you need to move back into it on the 15th of January. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Do you know what they want to do? They want us to commit suicide. They beat us up out here. They put us in a place. And while we're trying to heal and get our health back, they put us back out here. That's to drive us mad so that we end our life. I haven't allowed myself to cry for three weeks because I'm in pain. And I know when I first got the injury and I was crying, oh, it made it worse. You see, I want to cry so bad right now, but I can't. I guess it'll hurt. And I can't get mad because it'll hurt. <sighs> you gotta understand, I am a person that's very passionate. So it's been hard to control my emotions. I'm reaching out to you, the public. Please stand up for us. Please speak in our behalf. Let them know this, this is not humanity. This is cruelly, this is very cruel. And I'm not gonna take my life. I'm not gonna become a drug addict. I'm not gonna become an alcoholic. You just make me a stronger fighter. That's what you're creating in me. It's a soldier. I might be physically down. And I have PTSD, which, yeah, I'm broken. Psychology, or mentally I'm broken. Emotionally, <sighs> right now I'm, I'm at a stale with my emotions because I can't let it go out of control. But I'm still going to fight, even if I start sounding crazy. Because you see, they're driving me crazy by what they're doing to all of us. Please help me. Help me in this fight for all of us.
please. Please help. Please step up. Show your humanity. Show that you care, that you have a heart, and that you have a soul. I'm still trying to get people to donate vehicles for those that don't have any place to sleep in. They've gone taking people's tents and some people's cars. And even if they have their tents and their car, still don't deserve to live out like that. You know, my dream has always been to save all the animals that are being abused, about to be put to sleep in SBCA and all the other places. I always thought that if I was to win lottery, I would buy acres of land and uh, put RVs on it, total hookup, get some homeless people off the street, have them help me take care of animals that I'll be taking on, and then maybe buy some vans and trucks so when there is an animal in need maybe out there to rescue them you know straight dogs straight cats any kind of animal that needs to rescue I'm just gonna have a garden so we could survive off the land I also wanted to make part of it when there's fires and people have horses and cattle and just regular household pets and instead of being separated from them during the fire crisis be able to stay on this property and they'll be able to still take care of their horses and cattle and pets. See, if I was to win a lottery, <laughs> I'm not a material person. <laughs> Never was. I just always wanted to be part of the solution. I know that dream will never come true. But I want to start this war against those that have no heart and have no soul. I don't even know why they even call themselves humans. I don't want this second dream of mine to fail. Part of me doesn't want to give up on my first dream. And definitely, 100% of me doesn't want to give up on this dream for the... for saving all of us. Please help. Please help to, for at least one of my dreams to come true, please. I have never in my life felt such a purpose for me. And I feel very strong on this. Look, there are homeless people I don't get along with. Hmm. Probably will never like. But that doesn't mean I don't love them. Because as Jesus would, and as God would, 
loves everybody, even those who don't have a heart or a soul. I will not hate. I would rather pray for them. So I'm praying for a whole lot of you, a whole lot of you, to help me, help us, help the future. And even those that hate us because we're homeless, as Jesus and God would, I love you. I don't like you. I don't have respect for you. But I'll pray for you to have a heart and a soul. And I'll pray for God to have mercy on you.